Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today we are going to continue on with this page setup that we started in the last video. And video. <laughs> Today we're going to continue on with this page setup that we started in the last video. And this is the Basically Amazing Foundations printable scrapbook album. And this is the A size album. And this one is uh, called Pretty Mosaic. That's the paper collection that we're using by Prima. I have a playlist specifically for this album, so if you want to see how we got to this point, um, I will link it up here and down below. If you want to check out the last video, it is in that playlist. And my templates are available in my Etsy shop, and I have them linked down below as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is, first we're going to start off with the envelope that we're going to put here in this faux down little pocket. And let me show you. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit as best I can. So in the Vintage uh, Envelopes and Inserts, set one, page 1A, sorry about that glare, I printed, what did I do with page 1A? Okay, I printed page 1A onto white cardstock, right, just plain old white cardstock, and then I printed one of the black and white background designs right on top. Page 1A I printed in my inkjet, and then for the black script background that I have printed on top, I put it through my laser printer because we're going to foil this, which would be so pretty. And the foiling does not work with inkjet printers. And then page 2A, which is the second part of the envelope, I printed it onto one of the pieces of patterned paper. So I cut this down. Let's see if I can get it right the first time. Not too bad. So that was the 12 by 12 sheet cardstock. So I cut it down to eight and a half and then to 11. So then I ran this through my printer. Can you see, you can barely see, um, this is like stark white and then this is that vintage um, look color that's printed over top. So then this is gonna be the second part. So let me move this. My um, insert that goes in my scrapper keeper. Get that out and put my pieces. I put them specifically in here because some templates are made specifically for those sizes. So I like to keep them separate. Okay, but before we cut anything out, one thing I think I've noticed is if you foil this right after you print it, it does foil a little bit better. But if you wait for days, it's it doesn't foil as well. Um, sometimes, I don't know. So if you're going to be on the safe side, I would just foil it as soon as you can. Okay. So I've already done this one time and I didn't like it. And the reason I'm telling you that is because my foil sheet already has the, see the script missing there. <laughs> okay. But we're going to use that same sheet anyway. I did this on regular flimsy copy paper and it was too flimsy. So, but also what I also did was I inked it up, um, printed it on the side, and then I printed the black and white background designs uh, script on there on that side. And then I inked it up after I cut it out, I inked it up. Actually, no, I inked up the whole page, not after I cut it out because there's the whole page. I inked it all the way up and then I also inked it with the bundled sage right in certain spots which is why it's got kind of like a, a greenish look to it because it was just white copy paper um, and then I sprayed it to get that wrinkly crinkly and for it to kind of model together well and it's really pretty but look what it did to the backside look what it did to the it kind of turned this backside green which again totally fine but it was just too flimsy so we'll have to use this somewhere else <laughs> But I wanted to show you that, that I did that because we're going to um, have to eventually use it. And I've already, you know, used a little bit of that foil. So that being said, the foil isn't going to be 100% perfect. So I'm going to put this uh, underneath here and I'm going to try not to get it in the exact same spot. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to kind of shift it, shimmy it a little to see if I can't get it. I didn't even have it straight. See if I can't get more foiling on there. 
All right, I've already got my mink machine heated up. I'm gonna go run this through the laminate or the, the foil machine. You could use a laminator, you could use an iron. Just if you're gonna use an iron, you don't need this plastic sleeve. But I'll be right back. All right, I just took it out of the, the mink machine and it is super hot. Um, I have two videos that I made on foiling. Uh, one was about the mink machine and about the laminator. And then the other one is about using glue and different little fun things you can do. So I will, um, I will link one of them up here and I'll link both of them down below in the description box if you wanna check those out. So I'm just burnishing it really good and I'm hoping that we got a good amount of foil. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. It's stuck to the plastic. So we're just gonna keep using that sheet. Can you see through it? Like, look at how much has been taken off already. We're gonna keep using it and using it and using it. Okay, so that's what that looks like now. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut both of, I'm gonna cut this out and then it's really hard to see, but I'm gonna cut both of these out because I think we're gonna use both one on the envelope and one on another part here. So I'm gonna cut these pieces out and be right back. So I've got everything ready. So I cut this piece out and I inked it up on both sides, except I was a little heavier on the flap. I didn't want it to be stark white. Um, but I inked those up and then I cut these two out because remember they were like this. Um, and I cut the center part out here, right? <laughs> um, and inked them up, scored them, and put score tape on them. Okay, so there's two of these, one smaller than the other. You could layer them on, on top if you want. You could put one on the front, one on the back if you want, but I'm gonna put, excuse me, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the big one, the larger of the two, on the envelope. We're gonna set this aside. Move these scrap, don't, don't throw away your scrap pieces. You may use these, you never know. The, um, maybe not that one, because it's, Got Genevieve designs on there, but but these other pieces, you know, you could totally use that accent color or that accent. Um, uh, what, what's the word I'm trying to say? Accent foiling. <laughs> All right, so let's attach this down. Let me make sure it's going to fit. Sometimes I don't trim very well. Yes, it will. So we're going to burnish this down first. And I'm going to take get back, take backing off of the long end there. Put a little glue stick on there just to help give me some wiggle room. It has saved me before in the past. Oh, wow. So since I don't want to mess up my, my, my envelope here, we're going to take the precaution. Huh. Okay. Then I'm gonna stick down this side first and then this other side. It looks like let me grab a little bit with just to be able to pick it. It's just because it looks like it might be a slightly cut askew. So we'll do that. And then we'll match this one up over here. Right. So now it's a, it looks like it's a poofy pocket. <laughs> so then we'll just take and burnish it. So then it looks like this. All right, so we're gonna do a wax seal. on here. So I'm trying to decide if we're going to put a magnet or not to keep it closed. I guess since it's in a pocket. It doesn't need a magnet, so I don't guess we have to put one. We'll just put the wax seal there. Uh, what do we think? Well, I'll sh you don't need a magnet, but I'm going to show you how to do it all the same. Okay just in case you want to add one to yours. Where's my little thingy? All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just prepping here. Let me get my candle. 
And I've got a little tray here. Oh, these are stuck together. Perfect. I'm going to put, oh, not, not yet. I'm going to use this uh, rose and in my wax seal beads that we've been using. This is a champagne, champagne gold color. It's what it says, but it, to me it seems more like a rose gold. It matches this pretty good. So I'm going to put two beads in there. All this stuff will be linked in my Amazon below. So I need to put a magnet. Oh, will shoot. Up there. I've got one smaller one left. So I'm going to put a magnet on here. We'll use the glue dot again. I'm going to put it right on the edge there. Let me make sure it's not going to interfere with anything. Nope. Okay. Oh, we're going to need a magnet saver too. I don't know which size we're going to need, so I'm going to set that aside. Whoops. I didn't get it in the middle, did I? Just twisted this a little. Okay, I think it's melted enough. So I'm gonna to try to pour it right over top of my magnet. And get it to kind of mush around. Then I'm gonna lay my rose wax seal right on top and I'm gonna let it cool for a minute. Of course, the mag. Whoa! Wow! Oh, I got wax on my table. Well, oh, shoot. Of course, this could be stuck to the magnet as well. So that's happened before. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. So, we might have to glue it back down. There we go. Woo! So the magnet was stuck to this, basically. So it was pulling it off. So it's gonna look like that, right? Doesn't that look cool together? Alright, so now I need a magnet saver. What if I use one of these giant ones? I can't really miss it if I do that. Can't go wrong. Or I use one of these tin caps. Let's use one of the tin caps. You don't need all of these different sizes of those magnet savers. You might want to get uh, one big and one, uh, one smaller if you'd like. Um, I had just ordered a bunch so that I could show you, you know, the different options and stuff. So I put it, I put a glue dot on the side that's going to attach to the back of this envelope here. I'm just going to kind of set it in here and then I'm hoping the magnet will grab it. Is it grabbing it? I hope it's not really working very well. So now we got that. So I'm going to open this up and I am going to put a piece of tape well, did you hear my son? <laughs> across the top of it so nothing gets stuck on it. You want to see how I did my tape dispenser? I have a video for that. I'll link it up here and down below if you want to check it out. As a matter of fact, I'll put another piece in here, just in case. Okay. 
So we got that. And then this will go in here. I don't like it that that keeps getting stuck right there. What do we think? Do you like it? Oh, I so think it looks so cool. I think it's the neatest, um, neatest look. Okay, so now the other part of that envelope, I thought about putting back here for more things. What do you guys think? So I think I'm gonna add it. Do we have it cut properly? Yep. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add it on there. I'm gonna bonus it just a little bit. I think it'd be fun just to have a little pocket back there. I'm gonna take all of the backing off. A little bit of glue stick. Well, I need to find it. I don't know why it keeps falling off. What is down there that it's hitting? I don't know, but it keeps falling out of my, <laughs> of my crafty companion. All right, let's do it this way. And I think I'm not gonna put it all the way to the edge because it's obviously not as big as this page. I got glue stick everywhere. Yeah, I love that, that's so cute. Okay, now what can you put in there? Let me grab, this is just a piece of coffee stained paper. Pretty sure this is a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet. And I'm pretty sure if you fold it in thirds, You can then have a little a little letter to go in your little in your little pocket. Oh, I love that idea. I love that idea. I feel like it needs some embellishing, but I think for right now we'll just leave it like that. So the same for this uh, envelope here. It could a letter can go inside. Just a folded up piece of letter, you know, standard size um, paper. I was thinking about doing more inserts, but I like it just like that. I like it just like that. Yep. And then we flip it back here. This could use a little bit of bling, couldn't it? But we'll hold off on that. Maybe we'll add some later, but I love that. I love this. I love this idea. Do we want the letter to be like this? That is so cute. Okay. Now I need to think about what I'm gonna do here. So I'm gonna put some thought into that and then I'll be right back. So I think I decided we're gonna do one of those fun little slit pockets. So this is the mat for page 8B and it's on page 55B in the set of templates. So I'm gonna keep the large uh, scrap there. So I cut it out and then I inked it up um, around the edges there just so there wasn't any white cardstock showing. So I think I'm going to use, because this has lines, because I did this in the last album with the black and white um, stripes, so because this has lines, I'm going to use the lines and I'll start by using my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. I'm going to use the little skinny eighth of an inch. Let's see, how far do I want to go down in that? Well, maybe I should do a bit more. So I'm going to set the side measurement to, is that a half an inch? Um, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to pull it down to maybe three-fourths of an inch. There's like little measurements right here. So I'm going to pick this line here. So it's one, two, three, the fourth line from the right side is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to slide this in there and I'm going to center that line there whoop, in the in the circle that I can see, the hole that I can see. Punch a hole. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Pretty good. 
Then I'm going to take my craft knife and a ruler. And I'm going to lay my, my ruler on the outer or the inner edge of this circle here on both. I'm going to line it up and I'm going to slice it. I'm going to slow and steady. I'm going to slice from circle to circle. Did I get it? Yep. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the same thing from the edge to edge, from circle to circle. Whoops. So we're just taking that inside piece in between the two circles. We're taking that out. We're making a slot, which I think is so fun. Did I get it? Yes. Perfect. Perfect little sliver has been removed. <laughs> right? So isn't this going to be cute? Okay, so let me, before I forget, I'm going to ink up this here just so it's not stark white. I think I'm pretty, oh, is that 8B going to show? No. And then I'm going to ink that edge up as best I can here. I might not be able to get it very good. So this is going to be the pocket part here, and this is going to be attached now. So I'm going to use a liquid glue because the inserts, I don't want them to get stuck on any sort of tape or dry glue. So I'm going to take my Fabri-Tac. You could use your art glitter glue if you wanted to. I'm going to go around all the edges here. I might even go a little bit in. I don't want the inserts getting lost. And then I'm going to go along this edge. So this is going to be the closed side. And let's mat this page. just yet another way to add a little bit of storage space, a little bit of photo area space. Um, do I have, let's see, what do I have already printed off? So I'm pretty sure this is a five by seven photo mat, the one we've used, uh, we used uh, the other side of this in another page or another video. So we can, it can definitely hold five by seven photos. It can hold the four by six photos. I don't guess I have any of that out. Um, so it's definitely big enough, so perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. But I don't know what I want to put in there yet. I mean, I guess this could go in there, right? It's got a little embroidery there. Kind of blends in a little bit. So cute, I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. I'm going to think about that. I'll be right back. Okay. Here's what I decided to do. I decided to just add one of those five by seven photo mats. So there it's what it looks. That's one of the uh, pink vintage collage. I put a five by seven stamp on the back there. So I'm going to put, I am going to put that in there. And then this is one of the four by six photo mats that I had foiled the edge. I did the foiling on this one. I think I did that in the foiling, the more foiling video where I put that, but I've done it already many times where we just edged it with glue. So I had it, but it has a little bit of green um, from the bundled sage that I had inked a little bit. So I just picked up one of the uh, four by six journaling cards. I kind of wonder, does it go this way? It may look like it go this way. Oh, well, that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> so I picked up, uh, picked up one of the journaling cards. I inked the edges and then I put one of the whole reinforcements, one of the foiled ones, 
on here, right? And then punch through, and then I only glued it on two sides, so that way I could have a pull, but then I could also have like a little secret spot there to tuck some things in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it at those two inserts for now, because remember, we're just doing like minimal embellishing and inserts for right now. Um, we've got a whole lot of like wood embellishments, chipboard embellishments, flowers, and things like that uh, that we can come back and add later on after we're, you know, when we're, when we're more close to being done. I think that um, works out pretty good. Plus, we'll have a lot of leftover bits here and there that we can add into pockets and things like that. So I think we're just, for now, that'll be it. That'll be it because we've just done just a little bit of embellishing here and there. Um, and then we can come back and really just, you know, deck it all out. So, so there's one of the ones where we did the foiling around the edge and stuff. So, so yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. All right. And this is sticking, you guys. But I think it's sticking because the magnet's right there. And it's making it a little bit more, like, I don't know, tight, if that makes any sense. So, but I'm going to leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. I'll try to find a solution. But yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I think that's a good idea. I might ink this up a little bit. It's, it's kind of too stark almost. This is just a coffee stained paper. If you don't want to coffee stain your own, I got a link down there in Etsy. You can find an Etsy seller that, um, that you know, does that and will ship it to you. I do not. I do not sell I get that. I ask that all the time. I get asked that all the time. I do not have a coffee stain paper in my shop. Um, but yeah, that makes me feel better. So yeah, I think that's what we do. What do you guys think? I think I like it. So and then as like the last album, we left these middle bits like plain for now. So I think we're going to do the same for that, and then we'll start on the other side of the fin next. So I really like this idea right here. This little bit. Um, a foil on that. I think it's really cute. So I'm totally, totally liking it. Okay, you guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, let me know if you try the foiling on the patterned paper or the foiling on um, your prints out or your printouts. I think it's a super pretty look and it just looks really nice and elegant. I really, I really dig it. Um, everything's linked down in the description box below. So if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and do so so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you guys next time.